One can, of course, and should study precedents. That goes on all one's life. One does this by reading the engineering periodicals. One does this by looking at the advertisements in the engineering periodicals to see what the latest equipment may be, how things are being done in the field. One needs to keep up in that way, and that is a way to sharpen judgment. And another very valuable way of developing judgment is by what might be called an apprenticeship. This isn't quite the same kind of an apprenticeship I had in mind when I was talking about changing jobs from one position to another. This is learning from somebody with experience on a particular job to do a certain complicated thing. For example, the foundation of every dam differs from that of any other dam. If it's a rock foundation, there are all sorts of things that can differ. The presence or absence of faults, of weathered zones, whether the foundation consists of beds that are tilted, are flat-lying, are irregular, whether the abutments have many steps, whether they have overhangs, all these things are important if one is going to put an earth dam on top of such a foundation. It is almost impossible to write a specification that covers all these variables. You can't write a specification in advance because usually the site has not been excavated so that you can see what the conditions are until construction has started. And so if somebody insists on writing specifications, they are probably not going to fit the picture. What seems to work the best is for the designers and experienced people to come out at the appropriate time when the foundation is uncovered. Get together with the contractor's man who is going to actually do the work. Get together with the resident engineer who is going to supervise him and go from spot to spot on the foundation and decide how each of the things that were seen would be treated. All the people would come to an agreement after discussing these things and decide how the job should be done. And this is a form of apprenticeship because those who have the feel, the experience in many projects can be the persons who come around and educate the folks on the job as to the situation that requires remedying. So in these various ways, one can cultivate judgment by studying precedents, by varying experience, and even by studying the lives, the biographies of famous engineers to see how they approach their problems. Judgment is, I think, an acquired trait, something that every engineer should have and can have if he works at it. A few years ago, Dr. Peck, you gave a talk at the University of Laval on nature and civil engineering. In the last few years, we've seen a growth in the environmental issues and the involvement of geotechnical engineering. Would you like to give some idea of how you see geotechnical engineering will play an important part in addressing future environmental problems. I think geotechnical engineering is basic to most of the environmental issues. I think we should remember that a century or two ago, the great English water supply engineers who built water supply systems for cities in England and thereby ended uh, the episodes of cholera and many of the devastating plagues that occurred at that time. Those engineers were very far sighted. They insisted that sewers be built to go with the water supplies because they recognized that the waste would be a serious problem. That combination of supplying pure water and taking away the water that has been contaminated goes very back, goes back to the roots of uh, the practice of civil engineering. And it's as important today as it was then. Civil engineers have built facilities that have helped produce produce some of the waste we have, no question about it. But as civil engineers who have the know-how to handle much of the waste, to store it, to conduct it, to do whatever is necessary, 
And much of this is done by ponding, by injecting into the ground, by various activities that directly uh, call on the services of the geotechnical engineer. Dr. Peck, you are still as enthusiastic about engineering as when I first met you at the University of Illinois over 30 years ago. Would you like to explain why your interest is still so keen? I was enthused about being an engineer before I became one. My father was one. He was a railroad bridge engineer in Colorado. He enjoyed what he was doing. I wanted to do what he was doing. I wanted to be a bridge engineer. I got started down that road, and then I got deflected into what then was a newer branch of geotechnics. Everything that was done in those early days was new. It was different. And everything that's being done today is likely to be bigger, different, and better. I can't imagine not being involved in engineering. I suppose one reason why I enjoy it is that I can do real engineering. That is perhaps all that I try to do. I don't have to be running an organization. I don't have to feed many mouths. I can pay attention to jobs that intrigue me because they are different, because they have some sort of a challenge. I think life without such a challenge would be pretty dull, and engineering is the thing I most like to do. I see no reason to stop it.